Hello, my name is Sanjay Khatri and some have dubbed me as the first Indian male ballet dancer in the country. Back in 2002, when I started my ballet journey, I was a 19 years old young boy coming from a very small town with big dreams. Initially, I wanted to be a model. I was preparing you know, for modeling, but somehow I landed up in ballet classes and uh, it was very boring to me in those days because I had no taste. I have never heard about uh, I have never heard about ballet, and there was no classical music uh, sense in me. So, uh, but I can. There have been times when many people ask me that uh, why did you choose ballet? Why do you do ballet? So honestly speaking, there are no answers to that because I believe that I did not choose ballet. Let's say ballet chose me. And uh, it came into my destiny because if you see, if you if 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 you think, before the age of nineteen, I have never heard about the word, and suddenly at nineteen plus, I was in ballet classes. So let's say you know, if I say it that way, ballet chose me. I think it uh, it makes more justice to my mind. So I was born and grew up in Narila, which is a small town in border of Haryana. We are three brother and sister, two brother, one sister, and our father passed away when I was only three years old. So my mother growing us with three kids had a very tough time and uh, living in a stereotype society, you know, in Narela, Haryana, and I think, I'm sure they, you know, those tough days even today exist in India. So I grew up as a very aggressive child when I was very young. And I found ballet and for some extent, I, re I have realized now that it was a tool to me to take out my aggression because I could do some physical activity. I was treating ballet as a physical activity and uh, it was a tool to take out some aggression out of my body. And as I grew as a mature dancer and teacher, I realized that was the wrong uh, you know, way of thinking and doing it. Similarly, there were some other challenges also. So one of the challenges it was like, you know, me coming, you know, from a small town in Narela and doing ballet, right? The people there enjoy watching Indian gods dancing on TV, but they would not see or accept a man dancing, you know, ballet because they would, you know, caution many things on my personal lifestyle or my you know, sexual origin. Let me clarify here one thing. The ballet does not tell you or guide you to live certain lifestyle. That is the individual uh, you know, choice. And I don't think any art form does that. And that's completely a choice of an individual, however they want to live their life. So it has nothing related to ballet or any art form or maybe any field, whether you are a doctor or engineer. So <clears throat> my journey as a dancer uh, have been very interesting and I have been exciting. It's an exciting journey and I'm still enjoying the ride, of course, because it's not over. I'm a teacher now. I'm a ballet teacher now. So when I started to dance ballet in those days, we didn't have many resources and there were no social media. There was no internet like today, right? So, uh, I had only one teacher and we were getting only one class in a day. So what I was doing, I was doing the same class in the morning myself. Then I would go and I do the same class with the teacher. And before I, I sleep, I would do some other exercises, which will help me to become better in ballet. Right. So, uh, that's what I practice for almost six to eight years. And uh, I was told, I was told by many people that Indians can't do ballet, even, you know, in fact, one of the Argentinian teacher, he told me, you cannot go abroad, you cannot make your career international. And that was, you know, very uh, disheartening, you know, very demotivating, actually. But uh, I decided that I would make uh, my uh, last life international, I would go abroad. And that actually happened. I don't know how, but it actually changed. Uh, it actually happened. I went to South Korea and uh, I did audition there in the Universal Ballet Company. And the director there, Julia Moon, she was uh, 
humble enough to give me an opportunity because I was standing there next to those dancers who were uh, 20 years old and having double experience than me. And I was 29 years old and I had 10 years of experience. So you know, standing next to those dancers was already you know a very proud moment for me. But uh, you know, you see, when you really you know have a strong desire to do anything, when you wish strongly something. the want was there the will was there so my dream come my dream came true as a dancer and uh, uh preparing for the audition wasn't easy of course because i was here pre- i was here practicing myself having no teachers those days i was in mumbai so i applied for the audition in the universal ballet company they accepted the audition i went in 2000 Eleven, I think, and uh, while practicing there, I I twisted my ankle, so I was on bed rest for almost three months. Came back, I start teaching again. I make some money. I go back. I gave my audition in two thousand twelve, and they gave me they gave me an opportunity opportunity to join the company, and that's how I started. So that's the one place I'm mentioning here. But I, I part of that I've been in Argentina. I've been in England. I have performed internationally and also in India more in India than abroad of course and also the another amazing thing here that when I was in South Korea I there was American ballet theater they they were performing in like in South Korea so so they were looking for dancers there so I went and I gave audition and they chose me to be with them also so i was you know i was not of course i was not the principal dancer there but i was in the you know copa ballet and i did eight performances of giselle with them so i could see you know marcelo gomez tenzin kim uh, paloma herrera all these big stars i could see them dancing next to my eyes on stage standing behind me in the copa ballet so that was another great opportunity it came on my you know way as a dancer so <laughs> i really don't know how to express these emotions because uh, uh i would have not thought that i would make it happen honestly speaking i was just trying and trying but uh, there is one thing that i never stopped trying even there were so many people they told me you know indians cannot do ballet we don't have the right body structure Uh, our genes are different or our culture is different our meals are different our weather is different i don't know so many other things i was told but why not we have got two hands two legs spine mind everything intellect emotions why can't we do ballet i mean it's not about me being indian or somebody being russian or european or american it's about human wanting to do something which other humans are doing so you know in simple terms art have no boundaries today there are many dancers in america they are not indians and they are doing kathak bharatanatyam in classical yoga is everywhere now you see and it's a, it's a, it's heritage of india so how can you decide the boundaries or how can you decide that one particular human race can do something and the other one cannot i think that's <laughs> i want it it has happened and now i'm a teacher i am continuing my journey in ballet as a teacher now when i was dancing uh, from 29 to 32 i was in abroad traveling different places and performing and there was always in my mind that i want to get back to india to my country and try to share my knowledge of ballet with my people and try to make indian dancers uh, the ballet dancers because uh, i wanted uh, to help those dancers who have no resources actually like me i had no resources so i was thinking that if i have gained some knowledge and if i have some resources now in terms of mind or let's say something i thought that this can be utilized to help others 
keeping that in my mind, we started the studio in Gurgaon and we opened the doors for dancers. So there were those days when I was the only dancer and there used to be 18, 20 girls around me doing ballet. And when I started my studio, there were 50 boys in the studio at the first day and there were two, three girls only. So uh, that was a proud moment actually because you know, me doing ballet, coming from the border of Haryana, listening so many stereo stereotype uh, lines, thoughts and words. And now there was a day that there were 50 boys in my studio at the first day. So we started. So I started training my dancers and there was one boy called Prince Sharma. There was a boy called Prince Sharma. Uh, uh, he was a natural talent. He is a natural talent. And uh, I decided, he was just 16 years old. I decided to train him and try to help him to go abroad somewhere. So he could be the next. Actually, that was the plan. So every day, regressive training. I trained him hard for almost 4-5 hours in a day. And within a year, we got him 100% artistic scholarship in Kirov, Washington, D.C. And he was the first Indian to be in Kirov as a student. So that was another achievement as a uh, as a teacher at the age of I think 34 I was then. So I was a young teacher also. I was an old dancer but a young teacher. And uh, not only him, I have taught many other dancers who have been abroad and, and they have been performing in India and they are performing with me and they are performing themselves. So that is there. So there have been, there have been some other dancers also who train with me like uh, Tapti Jain, Purnendra Das, Arushi Bhargava, Joya Agarwal, Vishal, Bhuvi Devan. These are some of the dancers, some of them are very young and they are doing very good ballet. In fact, many of them are performing and teaching nationally and internationally so as a teacher i feel proud i'm happy and i'm very content with the job i'm doing um, i was lucky enough that i got these articles in the newspapers back in 2008 uh, there was an article in l magazine and you know uh, as india's only male ballet dancer they you know they put me there so you know, those days it felt happy because I've been, I was working very hard. Even today I'm working very hard as a teacher. Then there was another article in DNA Mumbai. There was another article in Times of India. And Punjab is the now bad times and G News. So there were a few articles also, you know, on me being the only male ballet dancer those days. And now there are many, you know, but there are not a lot also. There are, you know, four or five male ballet dancers in the whole country. If you see, many people consider that it's a women's job and in today's world, I don't know how, uh, you know, how can one think like that because uh, these days men uh, are doing many jobs which in old times they were thinking those were the job of women or women are doing some job, it's the, those are the job of the men. And, you know, in fact, in my opinion, why should we be even thinking like that? Because this is the reason the society is divided on terms of gender in terms of religion or so on you know so i don't think we should be even thinking you know what belongs to men and what belongs to women i i think it's really time to improve our mentality and uh, think in terms of equality not only talk about equality act as equal and think as equal uh, so it has been challenging, it is challenging, but uh, that is the, that's what makes it a joyful ride and I'm really enjoying it and uh, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. I am actually dreaming that by the age I reach 80, when I retire maybe at the age of 80, I don't know if I will, that I will see someday that lots of Indian male ballet dancers and female ballet dancers also and there are lots of ballet studios. So that is my aim, that is my goal and I will carry on this.